Welcome to the Recruiter Startup Podcast. This is the Lockdown Leadership Network Series. Today's guest is Dell Williams. He's the sales director from JSA. And I got him on board to have a bit of a chat about IR35, what it means, how he could explain it in layman's terms to some of us who aren't quite as au fait in contract recruitment as, as others. Um, and he was also able to go into a bit of depth as well for those who are more knowledgeable. We had a good chat about some of the solutions, some of the preparations that you can do. And really, it's all about being proactive, getting ahead of this thing and making sure that you're compliant. So a uh, really great interview. Thanks so much to uh, Dell for coming on. I hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to the Recruiter Startup Podcast. This is the Lockdown Leadership Network series. I'm joined today by our partner, Dell Williams from GASA. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Okay. Day two of lockdown. Yes. Uh, I think the first change is I need, I need your hat um, to, to disguise the lockdown necessity of shaving our hair, eh? Yeah. Well, my hair isn't in good shape, so I've, I've discovered the hat these last couple of years. <laughs> Recruitment hasn't been kind to my stress levels. Um, it's been a it's been a wild time. Before I jump into your own background, what's your sense of this lockdown compared to the last one? In terms of um, in, in the way that your your partners are are talking to you. Uh, good question. Um, this time round, uh, there hasn't been a noticeable change um, at the moment. I know we're only day two into it. Um, however, I, I think the recruitment agencies that we deal with, all of our partners, they adjusted really well during the initial lockdown um, and the working from home uh, stage uh, throughout the summer. And I think what we're seeing now is just a simple continuation of, of the new norm. Mm. Um, I do think that whereby recruiters have seen that people are still you know proactive and productive at home um there was a sense that not everyone went back in um you know on the new on the normal full time you know being at the desk and making lots of phone calls at, at that particular desk so uh where people are working from home and consultants are, have been very very good at their job while doing that mm. um i think that's that's reflective in the last few days and being a sales leader yourself um, how, how large a team are you running in your business and what's that transition been like for you guys? Yeah, interesting, interesting question. We, we made a decision um, at the beginning of, of this furlough scenario and working from home. Um, JSA have got around 20 business development and field sales operatives. Um, and we made a decision quite quickly uh, to, to keep them all on. Um, and to not furlough any of those guys. Um, so therefore we could have that partnership with the agencies um, and you know, have that continuation of sale um, and make sure that JSA were always there. Um, I know some of our competitors um, also went down that route, but some um, put their guys on furlough, but we made the decision to keep everyone in. Mm. Um, and internally, uh, we've got a, a very large inbound team who talk to the contractors and sign those guys up onto our services. Um, and we just had to make allowances for those guys to work from home. Um, but as, as a business, um, the, the front end, uh, we tended to keep um, active and proactive throughout the, the summer. And for any of the startups that don't know a lot about contract recruitment, could, you, could I just dumb this down a little bit, even for myself, because I come from mainly a permanent recruitment background. What, what is it your company does in relation to working with recruitment firms? Um, essentially, or primary, uh, everything to do with payroll for those contractors. So as and when um, a recruitment business places a contractor uh, into an end client, um, we'll take over all of the necessary um, payroll uh, solution or facilitations of um, getting that person uh, paid at the end of every week or at the end of every month. Um, as a group, JSA um, payroll up to 15,000 people on a weekly and monthly basis. So it's, it's more to take away all of the payroll or workforce contingency um, 
administration, I guess, mm. from recruitment companies so they can crack on and place people and carry on sourcing the right types of candidates for those particular contract roles um, and JSA step in and uh, ensure that the contractors are paid on time. So you hold the liability and the debt in return for a margin? Essentially, yeah, we, we make sure that we um, receive funds, for instance, from either the end client or nine times out of 10, the recruitment business. Yeah. Um, we employ that particular contractor to ensure the contractor has employment rights and benefits. Yeah. Um, and we uh, ensure that the correct taxes are collected and passed on to HMRC. That sounds like a lot. I would, uh, I'd not like to be doing that as a small business for myself. What, yeah. what percentage would you say, do, do most people use uh, you or one of your competitors when they're, when they're running their contractors? Yeah, I, I, would, I would suggest that's, that's the norm um, in our field. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, there's, there's hundreds of umbrella companies out there. Um, there's some very, very good ones, of course. Um, so we've got a sort of like, I would say 10 to 20 very large umbrella companies in our market space. Um, most recruitment companies would essentially have a preferred or approved list of those umbrella companies. Um, and as a business, around 90 to 95% of all of our contractors would have come via the recruitment company uh, that they're working through. Okay, interesting. And I suppose to get one up on your competitors, then you need to be more solution orientated in, 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 in what you're delivering to recruitment firms. Um, it probably leads me into asking, a little bit about the shambles that is Brexit and IR35. So when the, the, I feel like both topics have been dragging mm -hmm. for a while. What was, what, what, what was your initial strategy and has that changed in recent times as things seem to change all the time? Yeah, I, I think Brexit, Brexit's an easier one for payroll companies, I guess, to deal with in the sense that it's a consequence um, from the recruitment business. So recruitment companies will feel Brexit or, or see the impact a lot more than the payroll um, because essentially we would just see the either increase or decrease probably on the volume of contractors coming through to us because of the changes for Brexit. Mm. But as a, as a payroll organization, um, there, there's certain areas such as visas, right to work and, um, the, the intricacies of, of onboarding a particular contract if they've got anything to do with a foreign end client um, that might be a slight change for us or a hurdle but as a challenge it would probably be down to um, volume um, and as an example financial services they'll probably be impacted a lot more than um, education for us um, so therefore we just have to adjust accordingly uh, and work with those particular specialists in the recruitment area of finance, as an example, um, to ensure that as and when the contractors are being onboarded um, through us as a payroll option, um, there's consistency and there's an extension of the service that, that particular recruitment companies offer to the end client uh, and to that contractor. Um, but yeah, Brexit's a, a fairly simple one for us, other than the downside is if we speak to recruitment companies and you know ask where volume is or the anticipated amount of contractors coming through to us over the last year or two there's always been that uncertainty around brexit and sometimes that's challenged budgets and it's challenged uh, end clients to go off and source some um, really good contractors and that's obviously affected uh, the volume uh, relationship with that recruitment company I, I think we probably share a lot of clients um and you know we've we've done lots of deals with XS3 owners who are scaling, um, and the one thing that seems to be clear is that since Brexit, there is a pivot towards trying to build a, an EU contract business. Mm -hmm. When they come to you with that, do you, do you have the facility for that, or do you have to use a partner to integrate to to make that happen? That's yeah, international international payroll is a lot more complicated than just your standard UK payroll. Um, so there aren't a lot of specialists for international payroll out there. So we, we work with one or two uh, companies, but it's certainly something that JSA groups looking into a lot more. Um, and it will definitely be on the horizon over the next six to 12 months with our group. Mm. Um, at the moment, um, the, the, the bigger questions are, you know, do we have someone that we could obviously 
refer that particular um, uh, recruitment company to. Um, but also on the flip side, it's the, the currency as well. So we're getting more and more requests at the moment, yeah. I guess, with regards to how is it going to work if someone's paid in euros or how is it going to work if there is a, um, a particular exchange rate at the time or whatever it might be. So they're, they're the nuances around currency and around international uh, workers that we're probably getting a few questions on now um, leading up to the end of this year. And then I think, you know, through, throughout next year, the international markets, something that that's probably going to raise some more questions and, and raise some more opportunities for everyone. It's, it's a qu- like I'm asking because this is the questions that have gone off in the group right now. Like, uh, like if I'm, if I'm, if the guy's based in Germany or yeah. if the job's based in Germany, but he's now in Spain, we're in the UK. Yep. What do we do? <laughs> like it, the, the whole world is like, it's, I feel like the, the complexity of where people live to where people work to where the business is registered mm. has got very mangled since yep. lockdown. So I'm, uh, it, it must present you with the challenge to go, okay, how can I steer into this to create a solution that's a one-stop shop for us? And, and, and again, because of the, because of various countries having various tax rules and various demands on, on payroll, um, you know, three years ago it it wasn't simple um it was it's super complicated but there is an argument to suggest that if you just looked at it very black and white you could just suggest that okay you go off and you you look at an accountancy firm in spain mm. and you franchise out almost this jsa group um ethos and you buy an accountancy firm or you partner with an accountancy firm in that particular country um and you essentially franchise out um, I think that's going to be much more difficult post Brexit. Um, so I think there's going to have to be a smarter solution um, and, and international payroll um, is going to just be a, a slightly more complex on, in an already yeah. super complex um, <laughs> <laughs> industry. Yeah. So I, I think there's, you know, the partnerships that people will have when it comes to international payroll, it's going to be super important for them to make sure that they've got the right people that can deliver the service as well as ensuring all the compliance as well. I know for a fact, the only thing that'll matter to the agency owner is that they have one throat to choke. Yeah. That, that, that's all, you know that. They, 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 the last thing that they, like, that they would want is, okay, well, why don't you call our partner in this country and then you can, like, you do that to somebody and they're, they're out of there. Exactly. So again, you know, and the great news for us as a business is because of the extent of the, and the size of our business, um, I think that's where we could bottleneck quite, quite yeah. uh, handily in comparison to some of, um, you know, the more independent international uh, guys. So as and when we're looking at that, that's definitely something that's going to be part and parcel of the solution that more than likely we'll offer at some point. All right. I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, Explain I over 35 to me in 30 seconds in layman's terms. Uh, okay. So essentially, um, I 35 is the way uh, someone would be paid if working for a limited company. And it's a decision that someone has to make at the moment as a contractor, whether they're outside I R 35, which essentially says um, I'm genuinely self-employed and therefore I want to get taxed that way. Contractor decides that at the moment, um, give or take, um, public sector uh, changes a couple of years ago contractor decides it however from april um, everyone within this chain uh, is fundamentally going to have to get involved so an end client um, nine times out of ten now will have to be aware of um, the limited company worker whether that person should work inside or outside they'll determine it and then as a recruiter if they're involved in that chain uh, and they're classed as something called a fee payer um, they'll be legally responsible to ensure um, the correct tax is collected. So IR35 is essentially, are you self-employed or not? And can you prove it? Are you disguised? Um, and, and that's the test to show whether someone is genuine. All right. All of that went over my head. But <laughs> if I have contractors and I've got a problem with this, how can you solve it for me? Because I don't, I don't really want to worry about all of that. Like, is there, is there, is there any one-stop solution? Mm-hmm. Like what's going on here? Um, so again, over the last, IF35 is the biggest topic for, for yeah. payroll and for, for recruiters probably um, until probably May, June time next year, I would have thought. So on the agenda should be some preparation when it comes to IR35 for every single recruiter out there. 
So first things first, understand what it is. Um, mm. Lots and lots of marketing material out there. Obviously, JSA have got an IR35 hub on our website to deliver a lot of information, a lot of key information, um, a lot better than a, a 30 second uh, rant from Dale Williams. It's good, um, though. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get there. I've, I've only been doing it for 12 years, so uh, ho- hopefully we should be all right. Yeah. Um, so there's lots and lots of information out there from us and our, our competitors. Um, really, really good stuff for people to get educated on. Um, they then need to st- start speaking to end clients. Recruiters definitely need to engage. It's a, you know, being a salesperson, it's a great sales opportunity to pick up the phone, reach out to the end clients, see how they're getting on, what their requirements will be over the next six months, um, but also talk about IR35 um, and ensure that that conversation is going ahead. Um, we've, um, through an acquisition at the beginning of the year, um, we, we acquired a, a different umbrella company, built build it into our group. Um, they had a very, very good tool or solution that was uh, sold uh, into a lot of recruitment companies who started using that particular workflow um, in order to liaise with end clients, go through a workflow in order to assess every single job role mm-hmm. um, to decide whether that was inside or outside IR35 in a much more comprehensive mm-hmm. way um, than a finger in the air job or, mm-hmm. or uh, one of these blanket ban decisions that, that obviously we should avoid. It's such so, a good like blockchain. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we've we've developed something. You know, that it's a, it's now um, moved on to sort of like our version two, as I call it. Yeah. Um, it's a, a software a solution that's cloud based. Um, the platform's very very good. It's it looks user friendly in the sense that. I can use it quite easily um, and I can navigate through uh, the profile of it and the, the workflow systems of it. Are you the dummy test for, for, for this stuff? Yeah, I think we, JSA looked at making one of these yellow books. Um, Is it Dell proof? <laughs> IR35 complete test for dummies. And then it just had a picture of me. Um, so we've got, we've got this solution. We're, we're now um, talking to lots and lots of different recruitment companies about, you know, using that as, an integral part of their IR35 um, plan uh, moving forward. Um, but, you know, going back to competitors, and you know, that's definitely something that we've seen. And it's really, really useful. And it's really encouraging for our industry that the payroll companies and some insurers out there as well have started to get into um, offering solutions to recruitment companies in, in order to help and assist the IR35 um, reform and, and navigating their way through. Um, obviously, you know, I, I work for JSA and I, 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 we looked at round tables and we looked at some of our competitors solutions and, and we've done our best to ensure that, you know, we're, we're certainly one of the leaders within the marketplace when we're offering those. Um, so it's exciting times for us in the sense that we're, we're also moving away a little bit more from the, the payroll option in the sense of that's our primary role. But also now we're offering some further solutions into recruitment companies to help navigate legislation, which is really, really interesting and a, um, a great opportunity for us to all get involved together. Lovely. Let, let me just steer into that their product, just so we're clear. Mm-hmm. So depending on the size of the company, it's either somebody in compliance or the actual recruiter themselves logs in. And, how, and then walk me through the, like, what that looks like, just so we're yeah. all really really simple um steps so the recruitment company hold the platform Mm -hmm. they'll um instigate their request for the determination so their consultant uh, or the compliance team whoever's going to be responsible for this within the recruitment agency um they'll prompt uh, a determination request via the platform the platform would then essentially spit out a request and send it to the end client, whoever that nominated person is at the client. Um, The end client then completes via the platform um, the um, assessment request. So they'll go through a number of questions in order to determine whether someone is genuinely inside or outside IR35. At the end of that request scenario, they'll submit it uh, and it goes back to the recruitment agency. And the recruitment agency are then notified to suggest the end client has um, assessed the role and this role is inside IR35 or this role is outside IR35. Agency then own that particular assessment. Mm -hmm. They would then either be able to have the facility to go back to the end client 
uh, and maybe speak about that because if it's inside and they feel that you know the, the skilled workforce or the end client might lose out on a, on a few very very good candidates for that particular role based on that assessment they can then engage they can talk they can see whether there are workarounds with regards to the contract and working circumstances whereby if they reassess it they might get a different outcome but ultimately it is, is what it is it's inside or outside r35 agency hold on to that determination and then they link it to a worker so they can then add in the contractor to that particular determination um, press submit and the chain then spits out a, an email to the contractor contractor goes onto the um, onto the platform they'll review the assessment they'll understand they're inside ir35 or they'll understand they're outside ir35 and the great news for our tool as well is it's um, able to accommodate as you mentioned before, the relationships that recruitment companies have with payroll providers. So it's able to accommodate the PSL or the ASL of the recruitment company. So if someone is inside IR35, they'll be prompted to suggest this agency works with these four payroll providers. Who would you like to basically find out some information about? And they can then select one of the options. Obviously, you know, we, we like the idea of JSA being one of those options at all times. Mm -hmm. um, but understandably, recruitment companies don't just use us. They do have choice um, and they want to offer that choice to contractors. So again, um, by offering all of that, uh, we can hopefully close the whole um, circuit of IR35. So it's determined. Yep. It's, it's um, easily audited. There's a workforce management system to look at it. Um, and ultimately, the contractor understands their position and uh, understands they need to get paid. Okay. I'm crystal clear on all of that. Leads me to a kind of final question, which which we might kind of jump into for a little bit. Um, it's in the recruiter, recruit the, the recruiter's interest and in the contractor's interest in most cases for it for that person to be determined a contractor, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. To, to to be determined outside IF thirty five. Outside. Yeah. 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 What's the work around? How can, how can we make this happen? What are the pitfalls? Um, well, the pitfalls are if, if it's a workaround just for the sake of being a workaround in order to get that outside determination. That's, that's obviously not a good thing to do, um, which is why some planning needs to go into it. This change is happening at the beginning of April. Mm -hmm. So we've got three or four months to be prepared for this um, before people start getting paid in the right, the right way. Um, so I would suggest um, the workaround is to assess your current workforce um, as an agency, look at who's working through their own PSC, um, limited company, um, speak to those end clients to see whether um, that person is able to continue working through their own limited company post April. Um, an end client might use a different solution or they might use CEST, which is the HMRC online uh, assessment tool, which is fine. But and, and again, our, our tool can incorporate um, any other determinations for an audit purpose. Um, but very, very quickly, um, recruitment companies should be speaking to end clients to assess the current workforce, because the pitfall would be if they've got some really, really good contractors working at their um, their, their offices and, and within their firms and businesses um, and then all of a sudden they make this uneducated decision to change people over to an inside determination because the end client feels that that's the zero risk and we don't want to be involved in any of this and we sometimes can't you know don't have the resource or, or don't understand that um, so the end client uh, needs to be aware that obviously they should be assessing um, you know correctly and if, for instance, they're inside determinations, we've still got time here to look at the contract, to look at the working circumstances for the recruiter to speak to the end client and say, if we made some small changes or if we made a large fundamental change, all of a sudden this person will be outside IR35 and they'll be able to continue working in exactly the same way that they're working now. But it's very, very important if we make that change on a contract or we suggest that's going to be a change in their working circumstances, that's yeah. actually what happens. Um, but this is why, Mr. End Client, this is why it's going to be a good thing for us to do this. Happier person, contract continues working in that particular role. 
they can still maintain their limited company and take home uh, ultimately the money that they're used to taking home. We don't have to look into um, either, um, you know, rates that we're currently paying out or uh, changing people over to umbrella companies if that's going to harm them with regards to take home, especially in the environment we're in. However, on the flip side, you know, we do understand that there are going to be a lot of people that move from an outside determination to an inside determination. So it's very, very important for recruitment companies to also assess that, to look at volume. Um, and it's not inconceivable to all of a sudden have people like JSA and our other larger competitors all of a sudden receiving four or 5,000 incoming phone calls over a period of two or three weeks um, with contractors desperate to understand how an umbrella company works. Yeah. So if, if we leave that until March the 20th or 21st, I think everyone's going to be in a bit of a, mm. a problem. Yeah. So um, try and get prepared and, you know, speak to umbrella companies in January. All right. IR35 for dummies. We are done. Thank you so much, Del. I, uh, I didn't think I could ever get to grips with this, but I have. Um, really appreciate your time. Uh, we'll get you back on again. Great to, great to see you. Uh, enjoy lockdown. <laughs> right. <laughs>